Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this cool looking Real Madrid logo inside Microsoft PowerPoint. And just looking at the pictures you can clearly see, you know, all those small details on the crown. It will be a little bit more complex today. So the left one is an image, the right one is the logo created inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's get started. I will start with the blank presentation where I already have this logo pasted in. And I will open the format ribbon and I will select the format colors and I will select this uh, light gray version of the logo just so it's not getting an array and I will most likely start with the crown itself just because you know it's the probably the most complicated part of this logo so I will zoom in as much as I can like this and I will start by you know maybe drawing all those small circles so I'll insert shape oval and I will hold the shift key on my keyboard just so I'm drawing a circle not an oval like this Okay, this seems to be like a right size, so I will just put it in here and then I will duplicate it by either dragging it with my control key pressed on my keyboard or I can press the control D shortcut, which will duplicate it as well. It will actually move it to the same distance from the previous one, but it's not helping us too much because as you can see, we still have to give it some like a curvature. So it's not following a curve, but a line, a straight line, it's following a curve instead. Anyway, so it, that could be maybe a way how to make it a little bit easier just by, you know, holding the Ctrl D button uh, shortcut on your keyboard and after it's being duplicated, you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move it to the right spot, just like this. And just because it's somehow, you know, symmetric, you, we can only draw the left side. So, and of course the, the middle part, so that's the middle part. Again, I will duplicate it two more times. Then I will duplicate it one more time and I will make it bigger. So I will resize it hold, holding my control and shift key on my keyboard and make it bigger. Maybe not that big. Okay, this seems about the right size and of course duplicate it a few more times. Okay, what I will do now is I will open the selection pane and I will most likely select all those circles and just copy paste it. I will group it. I will also flip it vertically or horizontally, sorry, horizontally, move it like this and I will ungroup it just so I have all those elements as uh, separate ones. Now, most likely I have those in between, you know, middle points being duplicated. So I will select uh, them the, one of those instances and delete them. Okay, so this is like the base shape which we will use for the outer shape. How we will do it is we will select everything. I have to draw the selection rectangle from this you know, left side like this. Make sure that the picture is not being selected. I will group everything holding my control, holding the control G uh, shortcut on my keyboard. I will copy paste this, move it to the same spot. I will hide one of those groups and I will ungroup this one. So I will select group ungroup. And now what I will do is I will resize all those shapes. So every shape will be a little bit bigger. And I will, you know, basically drag any of those, uh, you know, any of those uh, resize handlers holding the control and shift key on my keyboard and watch what happens. You know, all the shapes will get resized and it kind of matches the outline of the crown, which is great. So I will maybe increase the transparency a little bit just so I can see the outline of the crown and you can see it's kind of matching which is great what's not matching are those big circles because those are made from three different pieces so i will get rid of those and i will create this shape from scratch so like this this is the first part second circle and third circle used for the outline like this i will merge those together so select format merge shapes union and i will duplicate this few more times and rotate it to match the rotation of the uh, below shape. This should be a little bit resized like this. And I will do the same for the left side. So again, I will rotate it a little bit and I will probably reuse this right shape for the left one as well. Okay, what we can do now is we can probably draw the missing parts, which is there is one more circle up on top. So I will select insert shapes and insert one more circle in here. There is this cross for which I believe there is a symbol. So there should be a cross symbol in the default shapes. I just have to move the yellow handles and uh, yellow handle around to make sure it kind of matches the 
background uh, shape and then they can continue with the main shape so we are missing those arcs we can either use ellipses but i believe it will be better if we use a shape which is called this one the block arc and i'll just draw it like this and try to align with the with the background image and i will most likely select the shape fill and increase the transparency and when i do this i will right click and select set as default shape so all the newly drawn shapes will have this uh, fill and outline properties seems like i kind of match the shape which is great so i will just copy paste it in here then i will copy paste those two shapes group those together i will select rotate flip horizontally move it to the left side ungroup it holding the control shift and the g that will ungroup this those uh, shapes and i can try to draw this below you know bottom part or the middle part of the crown for those i will also use the block arc so insert shapes block arc but those should be much smaller and of course the shape should be going like this okay maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit lighter okay that should be fine i will duplicate this shape multiple times i don't actually need to resize it or rotate it i just need to make sure that the curvature is kind of matching and it's kind of connecting to, uh, connected to the other shapes so this one could, this one should be connected to this shape and so on this one goes probably too much to the other shape okay so we have to draw also a few more circles I'll probably reuse this one, make it just a tiny bit, a little smaller and duplicate it multiple times. And as you can see, I'm getting a lot of um, guideline helpers trying to help me, but they are not helping me in any way because I have, there are so many of them. It's kind of distracting, but I guess I can live with that. I can turn it off later on if I want. Then I will draw this bottom shape. For this one, I will also use the block arc shape, but I will draw this fairly big. So I will draw it like this, maybe even bigger, like this, and then I will make it much lighter. I will zoom in, and try to match the shape, and you can see that the bottom, uh, that the beginning and end is kind of around it. So I will help myself with two more ellipses. So insert shapes oval. And I'll draw it like this, kind of matching the bottom shape and duplicate it for here. And it seems like we almost have the top part of the crown being done. So instead of having like a dozens or, or even more shapes, I will most likely select all of them and just uh, merge them into one shape. So select format, merge shapes, union and it seems like I haven't selected all the shapes so I may use the selection pane up on the right side to make sure everything is selected select format merge shapes union and now everything is selected so this is like the my main part of the crown we already have those circles being there so that's great so let's continue with the other parts we need those like cushion cushions whatever it is those uh, red parts below the crown so i will use most likely ovals for those because those are like uh, nicely rounded parts and just duplicate it for all of the parts like this and most likely when we add the overlay it should also go in here so i may help myself with one more small circle in here just so there are no gaps in there like this then i will select all of those shapes again merge shapes union i will hide this shape and i will continue with the bottom part of the crown for this one i will also start with the block arc so insert shapes block arc and i will draw it fairly big like this maybe even a little bit bigger and of course using the yellow handles i will make sure that it kind of matches the shape then i will zoom in again adjust those handles a little bit more 
and as you can see there is like a rounded top and bottom part with the diamond shape in the middle so let's start with the rounded, rounded parts I will select a new shape as being the oval but this should be fairly small like this matching the or being aligned closely to the shape I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned and I will do the same on the right side before I jump to the other shapes I may just simply select everything and merge it together because that would, uh, that's what I will do anyway later on so I will union those then I will insert those bigger circles in here duplicate it a few more times and I also need those diamond shapes so insert shapes diamond I will duplicate it and also rotate it and it's a good idea to move the rotation you know move the mouse far away from the shape so we have a little bit of more freedom and a little bit of more precision when rotating the shapes and I need two more resized version of those uh, diamond shapes for the beginning and end of the shape like this okay that should be fine so what I will probably do today uh, not today but uh, right now is I will show all my shapes and I will just uh, color those how they should be colored just you know it will be it will give me more time before I can uh, focus on the other parts of the logo so I will move one of those copied pictures on the left side or maybe below the crown just so I can see both at the same time I will hide the old picture but for the newly copied one I will reset the colors just so I can sample those I will select the main shape which should be of course a yellow so I will I use the eyedropper tool to sample the yellow one and for the outline it should be this blue one for the cushion below it should be red so I will sample the red and the outline should be blue as well all the uh, circles up on top should be white so I will use the eyedropper tool to sample white and sample the outline of course as well so sample the blue outline and now for the bottom part this bottom part should be yellow with the blue outline the ovals all the ovals should be white and I'm sampling the white color even when I can choose the white color but when I choose the white color it no transparency is, is being kept so I still have to open the model colors properties and set the transparency back to 0% so it's easier for me to just sample the color and the transparency will be set to 0% automatically for me so the middle one and the side, side uh, diamond shapes should be red so I will sample the red color the outline is same for all the shapes and those two diamond shapes should be blue so I will sample the blue which is of course the same as the outline it should be the outline should be a little bit bolder for all the shapes so I will select all the shapes and set the outline to I don't know like maybe one and a half points that seems about right okay so we, I guess we have the crown being done and we can move to the bottom part of the logo before I do so I will select all those shapes for the crown and simply group it and call this of course crown and I may hate it um, sorry I may hide it for now I will show the original grayscale picture and zoom out so I can see all those different shapes and you can clearly see that we are using the hollow circle and the uh, same shapes which we are using previously which is most likely the block arc so I will start with the hollow circle and I will draw it in the size that it's kind of matching the outside part of the logo move the yellow handle so it's the sizes are matching then I will maybe copy paste this shape move it to the same spot make it a little bit smaller like this and I will change the shape to be so edit shape change shape to be this uh, block arc so for the layer M that's probably the most complicated part or most complicated layer I want to subtract uh, this V shape and add the V shape so I will most likely insert a new rectangle so insert shapes rectangle 
sorry, rectangle, which I will rotate by 90 degrees and kind of align it with the M shape. But I don't want to add the whole rectangle shape, so I will insert a new circle, which I, for which I will use the intersection with the, one of those rectangles. So merge shapes, intersect. This I will add. So union and this big rectangle I will subtract. So we have the M shape. For the C shape, it's simply the block arc shape. So I will just draw it. Make sure it's the same size. So a little bit smaller and adjust the yellow handles. And for the F shape, I can probably go with the rectangles or I can start with the L shape, which will be easier. So I will start with the L shape, draw it like this, but I have to flip it. So flip vertically and adjust the sizes using the handles. I still need one more rectangle to have the second part of the F shape. Then I can merge all those shapes together because those all have the same outline. So union those shapes together and I need a stripe on the background. So I will draw one more circle like this. And I will draw one more rectangle, which I'll rotate by 45 degrees, move it over the circle, resize it to kind of match the shape. Select both shapes, select merge shapes, intersect and I will move this below all the other shapes. I can hide this picture, I can show the colored one, move it to the side and it seems like that for the background shape it should be blue so I will sample the color of the blue. Same for the outline and for all the other shapes, so those two shapes it should be yellow so sample the yellow color and sample the blue color for the outline and the outline should be most likely I don't know maybe like four and a half six points maybe something in between so I'll select more lines and I will set it to like maybe five points. Now I can show the crown as well and as you can see we have a nice looking uh, Real Madrid logo done in Microsoft PowerPoint in like 17 minutes which I think is great. I could probably spend you know a few more hours to get it to perfection but uh, despite being the fact that it's uh, you know, done in 17 minutes, I think it's, it looks fine. So that's it. That's how you create a Real Madrid logo in Microsoft PowerPoint. Thanks for watching.